Hey guys, what's up? We're back with more date fails. I'm Kate Quigley. I have the hilarious comedian and my very, very hot and uh, I want to say a little vulgar, vulgar, a little, right? a little vulgar. I'm <laughs> disgusting. A little disgusting. Jessica Michelle Singleton, what's up, girl? Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, thank you for being here. I'm, I'm super pumped. I feel like I never see you that much anymore. I know. I never run into you. I, I know. Guess it's, we're both busy. It's good things. It's but... a great thing. We're both doing a lot. You were just saying you have a whole month of touring Africa. Yeah, I'm up. going to South Africa in November. I'm That's on the road amazing. a lot. I'll, I've been out of town a ton, and I come back, and I have this weird thing of thinking it's other people that have been gone, I'll run into people and be like, where have you been? I'm the same. I do the same thing. And they're I, like, you haven't been around. Right. Like, they're like, oh. you left. Do you panic ever when you're gone that people will like kind of just forget about you here? You know what? No. Oh, that, that but, forget no, I said it. No, I think that's really normal because everyone else asked me that. And I'm like, I think I'm so out of sight, out of mind that like, I probably forget about everyone else. So I that's forget so that they funny. can forget about me. You're hard to forget though. Like, you have a vibe about you that's like, it's, this is a compliment because I never remember people. Like, I am <laughs> horrible. And God, me too. People call me out on it. There's this dude at the comedy store a couple weeks ago that I walked <gasps> up to. You know, we were talking and I was like, hey, I'm Kate. And you know, Matt. Oh, uh, he goes, Kate, you were at my birthday party <gasps> two years ago and we've been on shows together. And I was like, dude, I'm so, like, I'm so sorry. It's just, first of all, to be fair to me though, his birthday party was a joint birthday party with someone with else you were actually friends with. <laughs> Yeah. So it wasn't like I knew him. I've done that. You know what? I used to beat myself up because I'd be like, I'm so rude. Then there's a part of me that's like, okay, A, we meet a ton of people doing this. Like nonstop, you're meeting people. B, right. it's like, okay, well, if I don't remember you, it's kind of on you too. I feel the maybe same. That's, but then I'm like, is that? Is that arrogant? You're like, there's know. nothing memorable. I Here's who I remember. I remember people who are absolutely hilarious. Yes. Right? I remember people I would like to have sex with. I mean, for sure. Usually. I don't, don't always still, remember that. I name. don't even remember some yeah. people I have had sex with. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's so pathetic that I can still count mine. That's, I I mean. It's pathetic. It's not pathetic. It makes me sad. Well, I mean, it's good. I think it's, it's there's no good or bad. It's, it's just, just because I was out of the game for 10 years. That's I was right, married. you're married. Yeah, so I'm like playing catch up. I'm binge fucking now. I mean, I can't even put a, a range on the amount of people i've had sex with good i feel like people should get out there and find out what they like well yeah well to me it's almost creepy i guess if you have a low enough number it's not that creepy to know but at a certain point it's like oh you like if you have right. had sex with more than 20 people and you know how many people you've had I agree. sex with what are you doing like if you're counting every single you're run, a serial killer there is someone that i who the fuck did i ask i can't remember who it was who had a crazy high number it was like 677 or something but he knew the exact number and he'd written them all down that's nuts that's creepy as fuck I, you're right i once tried to make a list and this had to be like half the amount of people ago just because I was like well how many people have I had sex with and then I started making it. I was like oh this is just gonna upset me because I'm not I'm gonna I was like what was that guy's name oh do you find that all right well first of all I should have I should have done this up top because I wanted to say this for you and we just started talking right away that you guys can catch Jessica at the Great Plains uh Comedy Fest what is it? September yeah. 13th through 18th it's in Sask I mean if you're in Saskatchewan Canada so there you know you might be I have a lot of Canadians that I, I love feel like Canadians. I have a lot. Of, I love Canadians. I'll be in Saskatoon, too. which sounds like a fake town. Have you been there before? No, it'll be my first time. Really? Yeah. I'm I was excited. just in Edmonton for the first time, and I had never it? been there. It was fun. The crowds were great. The crowds were like comedy crowds. I love it. Well, everyone I've ever met out of Canada is so funny. They're so, so cool. I imagine it's good comedy people. I'm excited. They really were. Yeah, I had a great time there. And and from what I heard, I haven't actually done stand up anywhere else in Canada, but I I have heard that it's fantastic everywhere. I mean, that's what I've heard too. I have a few Canadian comic friends and stuff, and they they, they all love it. They love it. It where, seems great. Where did you grow up? Uh, Alaska. So that's next right. Because I was yeah. just there, and you posted for me, which was so sweet. Oh yeah, I was like, I wonder if any of my drunk high school friends will come out and be like, I, and I was like almost terrified that someone was going to come and be like, I'm friends with Jessica. And I was like, oh no. I would have been thrilled, by oh, the way. God. I probably would have been. I'm. Ugh. It was really weird because I performed at the Alaskan Truckers Association, or I think it was. I also performed at the Hard Rock, which is oh, in that's Anchorage, interesting. right? Yeah, yeah. But then there was like an extra, like I guess it was like a corporate, a corporate kind of thing, Alaskan right? Alaskan Truckers. That's yeah. the best. So they hired me, and dude, I was like, oh. 
these are my people. I'm going to do great here because I'm kind of dirty and they'll love, like, it'll be a bunch of truck drivers. Like, look at all me. these hats I own. Yeah. I'm I was in. like, I'm going to do awesome. And then I, I walked in. I almost shit my pants because it wasn't truck drivers. Oh, it was no. the people who own the companies. The companies. <gasps> so it was like suits. Oh no! And it was in like a banquet hall, and people were really dressed up. And I was—they were giving away awards, and I literally was like, "These people are gonna." And I had, by the way, shown up like everyone's dressed up. I'm in like a flannel and a trucker hat. Oh god! Like, you're like, I was—I wanted to do truck stop comedy. These, yes. These are CEOs. Yes. Oh my god! I was so fucking nervous. And then I went up, and actually, it went fine, except there was a kid. Someone uh. brought like their ten-year-old kid. What a nice. Nightmare. I know, and he just stuck headphones on the kid well, in the back of the room. Literal earmuffs. Literal that earmuffs. That has to be someone who's divorced. Absolutely. Of divorced daddies. Like, after this, we'll go to Denny's. It was, <laughs> like, it was crazy. But I did the whole thing, and it actually went fine. But then afterwards, the best part is the president comes up to me, who's like this 80-year-old, little 80, 85-year-old man. Oh, God. And he said to me, he said, I just wanted to tell you that I was out sick when they hired you. And I was a little worried. I was a little worried that we made a mistake, but you actually did a fine, fine I was job. A little wor- that's that's the said. most Alaskan thing I've ever heard. When I found out we hired a woman, I was like, oh no. Yeah. Women aren't funny. Yeah, he was worried. So, so But oh I did God. a fine, that was the best part. The compliment was you did a fine job. Fine. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Truck. I was like, Ma'am. I'll take it. I'll take oh, it. God. Did so, you have fun while you were up there? Actually, I did. I had a really good time. Um, I drank a lot. I always, I'm going home next week uh, and. Uh, I'm terrified because I haven't been drinking. And my friends basically bully me into drinking when I go. Really? And then I have a problem where I will not drink. Just, out, I, you know, I'm not like actively like, I'm not drinking. I just am busy and I'm a workaholic, so I won't drink. And yeah. then I get around my friends who are drinkers and I try to drink the way I used to when I drank all the time. And then yeah. I die. You like, can't. I'm like, huh? oh, no. That's just, so yeah. funny. No, you totally can't. You think you're, my tolerance is so low right now because I, I was in Vegas for a week and then when I got back, I didn't drink for like four or five days. And then I had, I had two drinks and I was like wasted the other night. Yeah. I yeah. get like, I'm on like, I'm a one drink person now and then I'm good. That's great though. I mean, it is great as long as I only have one drink. Otherwise right. I'm a sloppy mess. Are you, what kind of drunk are you? I'm fun. You're a fun drunk. I'm You're fun. happy. Yeah, I'm very like life of the party. Oh, I don't good. usually get. I'm not like an angry crier or anything. That's there important. Have been moments, but like, <laughs> do you have a cutoff where you turn from happy drunk to sad drunk? Because I do. Ah, uh, I don't know. I think I just always drink so quickly. I go straight to blacked out. <laughs> That's hilarious. You're like, uh, I'm happy, then I pass the fuck out. You know what I think it is? Is when I'm super drunk, it's just, and I don't know if this is true for everyone, but it's just the most of whatever emotion I have going on inside of me is what comes out. So if I'm drinking and like I'm trying to cover up the fact that I'm sad, eventually I'm going to be like, and I'm alone and is stupid. Same. But, or angry or whatever. I think that's normal. That's why they say, I mean, it's basically truth serum. Whatever you're feeling, it you're just more like, honest. Yeah. I dated a guy who didn't drink, not because he was an alcoholic, just because he just, you know, he didn't drink. And this is one of those people. Every once in a while I would slip. This is so awful. Oh my God, you didn't, oh no. Every once in a while I'd slip him a little alcohol <laughs> on purpose just to get him to like, tell me the truth. Oh my God. <laughs> You're like truth roofing him. It's like yeah. women are roofing men for emotional honesty. It's like I didn't sleep with him. I just got him to tell me how he felt. I'm like that's yeah, that's wrong. It's kind of fucked up now that I'm thinking back on it. I feel I was very young. It was like the first guy I dated out of my marriage. Also, like alcohol is has such a distinct taste that if you don't question Notice what it? you're drinking, like it's I mean, what's wrong with you? I would put it in smoothies that were like super sweet. Oh my god, you're a crazy <laughs> person. I love just to get him to just be like, Do you really love me? If you're wondering if I'm insane, like people don't understand when I tweet that I'm like crazy and that's why I'm single. No, I am well and people it's so funny when when you tweet about not you specific but anyone, when you talk about any type of like intense emotional thing you do, but but you're not actively doing it all the time, people are like I think you're making that up. Right. Like, I'll talk a lot about, I have bits about depression, yeah. but I'm not, I don't walk around with a rain cloud over my head, because I'm like, I'm not going to bum everyone else out, because I'm depressed, and people are like, I think you're making it up, or if, I, if I'm if i self-deprecating, like, like, right. just because just cause someone else doesn't think I'm unattractive, I'm like, I'm not allowed to have a day where I feel unattractive, because yeah. you don't think I am, Yeah. but people are like, mm, 
I don't believe you. And you're like, date me. Find out. Yeah. You want to find out? There's an easy way to. I've yeah. thought about doing that. I've thought about just dating a few people, like a few, like one follower a week, like one Twitter, just so that it gets out there. That so I'm like, oh, she's it's oh, real. Oh, she real? Yeah. It's it, not a character she's doing. Yeah. Because people think if you're just like a cute, funny girl that it's so easy dating. I think it's just, it just, you have more people to choose from who are fucked up and yeah. you're fucked up because. Uh, well, that's the thing too, is like complaining about not being able to like find someone one people immediately go oh, come on it's like no i know i could date a person i right. know there are people out it's not like i'm like nobody will ever sleep with me or date me but it's like especially like for female comedians it's not the same as dudes like male comedians have girls that are hypothetically good catches coming up after shows at best we have like <laughs> men who are like i like what you said about your butthole Oh, I can't then, tell you how many guys have come up to me and been like, can I see that lazy boob? Or, oh, my God. Yeah, my wife and I want to take you the, the wife and I is like, the, the, do you get that all the time? The closest thing to a catch I'll get is a man who already has a wife and is like, we want to have a threesome. All the time. Same. I get like one of those a month. Yeah. yeah. I get it a lot. And I'm like, well, n- well who's your wife? <laughs> yeah. That's, well, the only reason I don't even identify as bisexual is because I'm afraid people would realize how shallow I am about women. <laughs> I'd be like, I'd be like, mm, she's not my type. Meanwhile, I date these men who are like, like by all social standards, monsters. Wait, but, have you done it? Have you gone home with a couple? After I have, but I in my head, in my head, I think that I have the ability to, or that like maybe eventually you might. I will. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. I also like. I I don't like the term sapiosexual because it sounds so douchey to be like, I'm I'm only attracted to intelligence. But like, it's personality plays in a lot for me. So like, I can't have a person just be like, I'd fuck you and me be like, oh, okay. I'm I'm so wet. No matter how hot they are. Yeah, I don't know. Guys don't get that. There has to be some connection connection or I don't get turned on by that. And it's like, I mean, yeah, no, I would say that the, and that outweighs physical whatever the physical thing is so much more for me like if anyone looks at the people i've been with like across the board there's not like a distinct physical type yeah but if someone can make me laugh i mean i'm not gonna do like old bits i wrote about it but like i literally i will overlook all their flaws if they're really funny i think that that's normal like if you ask women what they look for in a man every girl says funny funny yeah Yeah. well because laughing feels good laughing is like a connection i mean i did a a ton of shrooms last week and had this whole like like introspective uh, experience about like what laughter is and like where it comes from but yeah no you feel connected to someone when you laugh that's why I always tell people that comedy shows are great dates yeah because you take a girl to a comedy show she's laughing the whole time in her mind like she's not necessarily distinguishing yeah, why she she's laughing that feeling with, with you. you yeah, yeah no, it's I think it's, it's like an aphrodisiac I think yeah I definitely I have hooked up actually now that I'm thinking about it I have I don't very often invite guys to come see my stand up I'm so terrified if if a guy, I'm, which is weird because I have almost exclusively dated comics for the have last you like, really? four years unintentionally, but like it just happens. And then, uh, but I don't. The idea of a man I'm like currently dating seeing me perform is a nightmare to me. Yeah, I try to avoid it most of the time unless we're friends for like if it's a guy I'm friends with first and then mm-hmm. we start hooking up, I feel a little more comfortable. Yeah, with that makes it. sense because they already kind of know who you they are. They know me because that's yeah. what it is for me. The reason I don't want them to come is because I feel like they're getting to know me too fast. Yeah, because that's a heightened like not a, even necessarily a heightened version of who you are, but it's like a dumping of it's like intense. this is who I am. Yes, and I have and. I All am. the crazy too. I because I talk about being crazy on stage, yeah. and I talk about people I've slept with that I might not want people to know. And I know, like, it's probably people are like, "But you're saying it to a whole room of people." But it's so different when that one person you don't want to know. Yeah, it's like okay, and theoretically, he could like see a clip of me, or like I don't want to talk to a man and be like, "I've slept with so many people," and yet here I am on a podcast being like, <laughs> "Who knows?" I know, uh, <laughs> I know, I'm with you. Um, Oh, my God. I have so many questions about growing up in Alaska. Oh, God. How long did you live there for? When did you move? Uh, I moved there in sixth grade from southern Mississippi, and then I lived there through high school. So however many years that is, clearly not a lot of math going on in my head. Oh, like seven years. You moved right after high school? Yeah, immediately. I was like, goodbye. Did you, where in Alaska? Was it Anchorage? Anchorage, yeah. Okay, so you were kind of in a, I mean, it's It's not a city. It's not like people are like, what, are you living in an igloo or something? It's like, no, it's a relatively normal city. Yeah. A a little 
like country ish. It reminded me of the town I grew up in. Actually, I'm from Canton, Ohio, and okay. it totally reminded me. It just kind of like a small it's city. Like, yeah, it's far, country ish. Has like a country ish Midwest yeah. vibe. People are nice. There's a tendency to be a little bit backward socially, as far as like. I mean, I definitely had some redneck friends. I was like a huge redneck. I have come a long way. I don't say come a long way. I've just changed my perspective a lot. Well, I mean, my whole family, my dad is the biggest redneck. Yeah. Like, my dad is, in, I mean, I feel bad to say because he could watch or listen. I love my dad so of much. Course. But he's he's like, he is the guy with the mullet, the beer gut, the NASCAR, yes. like that. He smokes weed, and then he gets drunk, and he calls me, and he's like the philosophical, like the Bob Dylan hippie yeah, that's drunk. that's like everyone I grew up with. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it's actually embarrassing. Like, when I brought him, I brought him out to L.A., and he only he had two requests. He wanted weed while he was here. He wanted me to get him, Classic. you know, California weed. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And he wanted to come to the comedy store. And I took him oh. to the comedy store, and he wore cut off sweat shorts. Oh my god! And a tank top. And it was like so July. Funny. I was so I was like, oh my god, oh, this no. is yeah. yeah. I always like wonder that too, because like I'll see, and I mean, I love my mom, but she's a character, and like when other people talk about their parents, sometimes I get in my head. I'm like. Is nobody else embarrassed of their parents? Like, Everyone yeah. has to be. Because I'm like, oh, what are you doing? Why are you in sweatpants and clogs in a grocery <laughs> store? Like, why? don't do this to me. Do you feel pressure here in L.A. to, like, I, I used to just, you know, when I moved here, I would go to Ralph's like I would when I lived in Ohio, which is, like, no makeup, sweats, like, oh, like slippers. The, yeah, when you like, go out, you have to, like. I just, I don't feel like I have to look good, but I do feel like I can't just go to the store, like, with nothing at, like looking like total garbage you know it's, it's like and i still do find myself doing that occasionally i also live like on the east side which is like a little out of la so it's a little away from the kind of hollywood vibe but even still when i do it i sort of feel like i must look like i'm a crazy person to everyone else <laughs> because everyone else is like a little put together or fashionable and then i'm like I look like I'm homeless. Well, I mean, you don't, but I know what you mean. Like, it's yeah. And it's weird when you leave. Like, I was just in San Jose, and I was at the grocery store, and I saw this couple there in their obvious pajamas. They both had on, like, flannel pants, slippers, it's... hoodies. And I was like, oh, this feels like home. Like, yes. it felt normal to Getting me. out of L.A., because I've been, like, going on the road a lot and, like, going out of town, and I love it. And part of it is because, like, it brings back my self-esteem. Because I'm like, oh, I'm not a goblin monster i just live in la where people are like injected with things and the most beautiful people from every other part of the world are like let me go to la it is crazy but it like you... anywhere I, like i love going home because and i mean i again i'm not doing a bit but it, if anyone hears my bits about alaska i say something similar but like it literally is like a self-esteem boost because i'm like oh yeah oh i'm hot here <laughs> like yeah. Right? It's true, though. I mean, and you can also wear, like, the whole time I was in Alaska, I had, like, no makeup and, like, a flannel. Like, yes. the whole, it was so great. Well, and it, it's like I grew up in a city where your personality went so much further as far as, like, making you attractive. And, like, yeah, it was more about, like, who's, like, cool to hang out with than it was. Like, who's – obviously, there were people, like, the people like, oh, that person's hot or this. But it's, like, there wasn't this, like – what what is that vibe in LA that's right. like be beautiful and then I also think there's so many people here who are just I mean it's a magnet for narcissists so not only are people like good looking but people like think that they deserve to be with someone who's like the best looking and it's like fall back sir right it <laughs> is it is crazy I think show business breeds narcissism oh and for sure you have to be so self involved to be successful yeah and it's like I even find myself, you know, like I try, I'm trying so hard to hang on to like that Midwestern, like that sweet, nice, yeah. like not jaded, but it gets, it gets really hard because you almost have to be so selfish at yeah, times. You have to get like almost like cutthroaty or like. I hate that. Yeah. I really do. It's, and also it's weird though too, because there's a weird like transition that happens. Not that like I'm by no means successful, right? Like you're but, doing well. Well, I'm doing fine. Yeah. I'm like doing okay. Like I'm starting to take, I a, also wonder how long, like how successful do we have to get that we don't feel like we're just doing okay. Cause if you look it at never the you've done, yeah, it's I like, think. yeah. Cause you, you like, if you take yourself out of it and look at things on paper, it's like, okay, before I came here, if someone told me I was going to do that, this and that, you'd be like, so Oh true. my God. So true. Wow. But you get it now and it's like, all right, okay, well what's next? <laughs> 
Isn't that crazy? Like, I remember being a kid and watching TV, and I would have been so stoked. I, I always wanted to be on TV. To That's just all I wanted. Be on TV. I wanted to be on. That was my goal in life. Be on TV. And now it's like, yeah, I did like that little thing, but like, I mean, right. whatever. Now I have a show. I'm like, wow, but it's on. It's on not on basic cable, or it's on like you know what I mean? It's, it's like on this subscription network, channel, yeah. or like yeah. I mean, it is crazy how the more you get stuff, the more you feel like it's not like even I'm. I should just be happy to be working as a comic. Yeah. Period. But now in my head, I'm like, oh, but I. Want I want to get a special like I want like I want the next thing right yeah, it makes you crazy but I think that that's I think the people that have success are those people that are I never know. satisfied right because if you're satisfied you get you there stop and you're working like, hard yeah you're yeah. like I did it I may I've made it if I could treat my dating life like I treat my career which can is you, be that cutthroat and be like that uh, that high of standards that, yes can you imagine like turning just turning men down like mm, I needed something bigger you know what's <laughs> weird is like I all right sorry you're wasting my time I have to leave right like, can you I, I, I do that I do that with guys I think I get off on doing that to guys that are really successful that's funny and then I chase guys that are like losers I yeah, swear to God what's that I mean I do the chasing I get that the I mean I don't know if I necessarily do it to guys that are really successful but I get the appeal to it because it's like oh because especially in LA is like oh girls don't do that to them right and I think I get pissed <laughs> if they think that it's okay for them to act to that way like just because, because they're, they're special successful. it's like uh, you're just a man let me give you like an example of this okay I was just I, I went out five or six dates with this guy who's a very very successful actor like very famous okay and he's hot Oh, and I love that. I was into him, but then he started to do this bullshit thing where he wouldn't make plans with me. I get so. Can we just dis- when, just in general? Is that like an LA thing too? Is it like I Let's just like discuss to discuss the flow? Like, yeah. No, no, I Why? can't. Like my brain is like, no, you. I'm not hanging out with you if we can't put it on a calendar. I'm too busy to to try to figure out when you're available. Right. And then I, I like, I was just getting into an argument with a guy friend about this the other day because he was like, man, this girl's getting so pissed at me because I won't make plans. He's like, I just don't make plans. I hit people up when I'm free. Like, hey, what are you up to? You want to go grab a drink tonight? And she's always like, you know, well, why didn't you hit me up yesterday? Why don't you make plans with me ever? And he really can't wrap his, he's like, I don't make plans with my boys. They don't get pissed. I see them. Boys don't value their own time. It's like (laughs) that woman is busy. Right? Screw you. I feel like it's a respect thing. Like if you respect someone's time, it's okay to ask last minute because if I'm free, I'll come chill. But also it's like if you want to see me, you need to make plans. Is that crazy? No, not at all. I think it's insane when people won't make plans. And uh, a huge pet peeve of mine is when people make plans and cancel or like flake out. Guys like loosely make plans and then. And try to be like, well, you know, it wasn't like a solid. And it's like, yeah, no, it was for me. I pick, like, that's why I, I don't even date. I won't date. Uh, a like guy I, that doesn't make plans. Well, no. I mean, I think I'm not even dating in general because, like, I, I like, downloaded all the apps for, like, a day recently. And then I was like, <laughs> get me out of here. Because I realized, like, oh, my God, if I take one night off of shows to meet some man and he's... You feel like you great. wasted your time. I'm be so That's pissed. how I feel. You know what you should do? This is what I do. I set them up. If I have a show, let's say I have the Laugh Factory at 8, I'll be like, I can do happy hour with you at 6.30. I'll have one drink with them right before my show. Then if they, if I never want to see them again, eh, I wasted one hour, but I'm by the show. You're still at your show. That's what I do. I make that's them come smart. out. But I won't let them come to the show. Yeah. If, and, and then that's it. And that's how I do every first date. It's always happy hour before a show. I need to get like show. dating lessons from you. I also like get in my head about dating because I am not good with relationships either. And like, and instead of just being like, this is just a date. I'm like, well, I'm going to leave a bunch anyway. So like, it's not going to be able to be a relationship. And then I'm like, wait, I don't even want a relationship. Why am I panicking about the future with this person I've never met? Maybe you overthink because I'm Everything. an overthinker. Oh. I wonder if that's a comedian thing or a woman thing. Probably both. Yeah, because I, I like, I almost say it's a big comedian thing. Do you think so? Because you're chronically analyzing things. Yeah. You're a good comedian. You have to analyze things. Yeah. Yeah. I overthink everything. Well, so, so this, this famous dude, right? So after he stopped trying to make plans with me, I stopped seeing him. Anytime he hit me up, I would, I'd be like, hey, you need to make plans with me. I'm busy. You need to make plans with me. I'm busy. So the last time we were supposed to hang out, we had, we had, he hit me up and he was like, hey, are you free tomorrow? I'd love to get Made coffee plans. with you. Okay. Yeah, and I said, great, three o'clock, let's get coffee. I had stopped seeing him for like months. And this is a guy, by the way, that can get any girl, but I finally realized if I'm a dick to these guys, when they're a dick to me- Then they're more interested. They come, they come back. 
Yeah, well, because, I, I mean, I think that's a human thing, too, is that a lot of times it's like, oh, guys like it when, you, when you're when you kind of, like, a little shitty to them. But it's like, I think we all just love the chase. Yeah, and it's. I think it's not even being shitty. I think it's just being, uh, hey, I'm respecting worth yourself. you treating me like, yeah. Yeah, not being like, what, whatever, like, makes you happy. And but like, what's so annoying is that I, I do that with guys that have a lot of money or success or fame i have no problem but these guys who have nothing you're like desperately yes no i get crazy over the wall and i'll get in my head and get crazy and be like oh like he probably has like so many women (laughs) over these guys that are like and work at burger king riding a bike tour and and not to like devalue them because i really like clearly really like them but it's like what's wrong with me that i think everyone's hunting this guy down because you're into him. You think yeah. other people must well, be into him. Well, that's what our brains do is that if I'm into a guy, I'm like, everyone's probably trying to sleep with him. Do you go to the worst case scenario, too? Uh-huh. Like, I go to the worst. If they aren't returning my text, my brain goes straight to, oh, he's fucking. Like, right. That's and then it. I'm like, couldn't be doing anything else. It? And then social media is a nightmare because I'm like, I'm going through with what he's, what is he liked? What are his, oh, what is he do faked? Do that? Oh, my God, I'm crazy. And I'm like, well, obviously he's sleeping with all of these women. And then it's like, wait, I fave like or like or whatever so many tweets and it's like i can't imagine if someone's done that to me and just assumes i'm sleeping with all the people whose tweets i like Could you like, imagine i'm also very flirty on social media and yeah, it doesn't me always mean something like yeah. I, just, I, I i just have fun with it i've gotten really good i used to do what you do i've gotten so good at not doing it only because it only causes me pain it's like cutting if yeah. i go look at their social Which is media great. i'm kidding I <laughs> no you know i have gotten a lot better at it but that is the thing that i used to do and every once in a while, I'll catch myself slipping back into it when I really like a guy. And then I'm like, no, stop it. What am I? And then it's like most of it's just like guys liking themselves being tagged in a tweet anyway. And I'm like, Ugh. I wonder if guys You're just like me. do this. I always wonder if guys do what we do. Me too. Like, do you think if a guy hasn't heard from you for a couple days, he like goes on your Instagram to see what you've been doing? Yeah. Well, every once in a while, it's like a guy. <laughs> He's shaking his head. Yeah. They do. Aaron's saying yes. The produ- Aaron, you can always hop in at any time in this conversation, by the way. We need a male voice over there. Yeah, yeah, we'll to- we'll totally check your social. Do you ever like a girl's post to try to get her to like notice you? Like if you haven't talked to her in a while, because I feel like does that ever happen to you? Where all yeah. of a sudden, of course, someone like favorites a tweet and you're yeah. like, mm-hmm. if a guy <laughs> favorites a tweet that's more than like twelve hours old, I know for sure because nobody scrolls back through their timeline. Yeah, they're like just yeah. being like, hey. Yeah, that's a that's a passive aggressive. And by the way, bitch move. I think yes. it's a pussy move. Here's my thing. Guys do that to me. They're like, guys that have my phone number that could easily just send me a text. Instead, we'll go back three days and like a and couple favorite tweets. favorite a tweet. That's the thing I tweeted that I think you tweeted, retweeted, where I said, uh, I, I mean, I was just being silly, but I was like, fave this tweet if you want to flirt with me, but you're, you're too big yes. pussy. Yes. I retweeted um, that. But you know what? A guy who I have a huge thing for that I like had hooked up with we had like we sort it was like sort of dating it got really intense and then we were both like whoa hey what are we doing like and took a step back or whatever he liked that tweet and then he like winked he like sent a wink (laughs) and then and he was just trying to be silly right but I like lost my mind and I was like texting him and I was like why would you do that and like I wink crazy and you did not and he's like Like, serious crazy what yeah no I like texted him well you know what because I didn't notice because I don't have I have notifications turned off because I'll lose my mind and somebody else who I had talked to about this guy just had been like, oh, I really like this guy. And then be like, oh, it didn't work out. And I'm sad and it's weird. And like, I still like him. We still, like, you know, just a friend. Without me having seen like what happened yet, I get a tweet from that friend. They're like, uh oh, sub tweet war, which I think maybe like implanted the idea in my head that this person was like trying to be. Oh, God. It's so insane. I had also just come off the road and been in my car alone for like 12 that hours. That fucks you up. <laughs> yeah. It fucks you up. Because it gives up. you time to just overanalyze everything. I went crazy. I was just on the road for three <laughs> weeks and right before I left town I basically ended it with someone. I mean I, it wasn't like we weren't exclusively together yeah. but I basically was like I can't see you anymore and I actually blocked his number so he couldn't even text. By the way when Look. I block numbers usually it's so that I can't text that you them. Can't. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm, I am dude that's my problem. Moment I of am, weakness. Oh my god. Like- no dude. I am fucking I can't, I'm compulsive when it comes to texting if they don't answer. I get crazy. I get so angry when they don't answer. Just respond to me. I know you see it. If I know they've seen it, like if let's say I text you at midnight and around 10, 11 o'clock the next day, I know you're like at work and you never replied. I get 
fucking yeah, I get no, so I spiral. Mad. I'm like, just say and then something. I get angry and I send so many texts and I have like a whole conversation. I'm like, oh, he read this and thought this. Now I'm gonna like yeah, I make up for them. thinking in their head. Well, that's what I did with that guy. And then I was like, I and I ended up calling him and I was like, look. I need to talk to you about this because I know I'm being insane, but, like, can I just talk to you about it and <laughs> I love get that it out? I started this. This isn't even a guy you were hooking up with? It, no, I had hooked up with him. Oh, okay. Well, it, was, it was, like, I guess it's a fling. He was in another city, and I was on the road, but, like, I just, like, it got real intense real fast, which is not to say, like, I have done that chronically. Like, I have a pattern in relationships where I have been, like, oh, my God, this person, boo, let's be together forever. And then a few months later, we, like, we get together, and then I'm, like, I don't want to do this anymore, which is a thing I'm actively working on. And he has, <laughs> this guy had similar patterns, and we had talked about it before we hooked up, but I, like, was just really into him. And then that happened, because it was a thing that's, like, it was a thing. Okay, asked you like, did you guys have, like, amazing sexual chemistry? Yes. Yeah, I, I have a theory that the only time women go this kind of insane Crazy? No, I have is a whole, when the sex is... I have a whole bit about it. It's yeah. It's like, you just, you lose your mind. And yeah, it's like, literally. am I even into this person? Or is it just... There's a guy that I've been fucking... Well, we're not anymore, but had been fucking for like four months or something. And yeah. I I honestly can say at this point, looking at it, there's almost not one thing about him that I like. It was just the sex. But I was convinced that I was like in so love with in love with it. Like, oh, he's so great. And he like I could list a million great things about him. And then I look back, I'm like, I don't think I could list five things that, I that like we have in him. common. Yeah. But I like the that, sex, yeah. it's just fucking, it's blinding. Aaron, does this happen to guys? <laughs> I mean, do you just, do you, comp if the sex is amazing, do you feel love? I don't know. Do men ever feel love? Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I don't think it's the same for the guys. No, I think men are just like, uh, she's good enough. And <laughs> I think if men find a woman who's like, they think is really good and like, oh, I've really got this catch. Then the like, the woman has the opportunity to bully them into being in a relationship because they're like, I don't know if I'll find someone better, so I guess I'll just be with you if you want to be with I me. I think the only relationships that are successful are where both people think that they are lucky. Where the guy thinks that he has a prize and the girl thinks she doesn't need him that much. Oh, really? Yeah, that I don't know. In my experience, I, that's how I guess I imagine, and this is from the experience, someone who has a lot of experience with the relationships that don't work out, but like... <laughs> <laughs> Usually with me leaving, though, uh, almost exclusively with me being like, I have to get that. out of here. That's good. But like, I th in my head, I think it's like both people have to be like, I can't believe that this person wants to be with me. <laughs> Amazing. But I feel like you almost never get that dynamic. Someone's always more into it. I th think there's always someone who's more into it than like my ex-husband. I felt so lucky with the way he treated me. But in the back of my mind, there was always a part of me that was like, but could I do better? better? And he never had that thought. He was like, I love you. I love you. Oh, you're, amazing. Yeah. you're amazing. I worship you. I worship you. Like the whole, And I think that's why it lasted 10 years, honestly, yeah? because there was an element that he was always chasing. I think the guy has to kind of always be feel like that feel like, like you could get away i kind of feel like that or that there's you know it's weird like i noticed recently this territory thing too guys have oh, where really? it's like yeah because you know i tried dating a like a porn guy right oh even with them even when they're that open and they don't even care if you're fucking he didn't even care if i was fucking other people but there's still this weird like territorial thing i would notice where if it was another porn guy oh he'd be like, oh is that I noticed that porn guy has been hitting you up. Or like before, like if I was talking to an athlete, they wouldn't care about all these other guys. But if an athlete but in the it, same profession. Yeah, or it's like someone who, I guess it's like, is it because that person like rivals? I think it's a competitive thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's like, no, I, I want to be like the athlete that you're into. like Right. Like, oh, you can't, so you can date that plumber, but don't hook up with another football player. That's my... You that's know what I mean? My thing. I think that's or a it's like thing. Uh, is it them feeling like is it because the athlete feels superior to a plumber? But he's like, oh, this athlete's like bringing the same amount of things to the table. I don't know. You know what? Like I'll have to try. Think, because it's like I think in theory I could be. I've always figured felt I could be in an open relationship in theory, but I've never done it. But at the end of the day, it's like I I don't think I'd want it to be. Don't ask, don't tell. I, I would like be like I want to know what you're doing because I think that's right. hot. But also like at the end of it all, I want 
to believe that like I'm better than all of them. <laughs> I know that's where it gets awkward, right? right. It's like it's yeah, like, but like I have the best pussy, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> the guy should make you feel that way. Like I know I had Brad Williams on here, and um, he talked about this on here, so I don't feel bad repeating it. That him and his girlfriend have threesomes. Oh yeah, I've right? seen him at a hotel walk off with his to, girlfriend and another. Yeah, hotel, yeah, and been like. Amen. But he told me that, you know, he's like, it's so important to me that, like, after that girl leaves, I always make sure to fuck my girl again and, and like, tell her how amazing it is. Like, he's like, it's so important to me that she knows, like, she's number one. That, well, I think that's key to that's making something like that work. Yeah. Like, and then, because the way my life is going and where, like, my career is going, it, Long-term monogamy doesn't make sense for me. And also, like, it would be really unfair of me to be like, hey, man, uh, wait here and fuck no one. I'm going to leave for months. Yeah, Bye. I agree with that. I, 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 It's weird. Like, people kind of, I'm a little more open now to the open relationship thing. I always, when I was married, and here, by the way, maybe at the time I thought this was a clue that I should know the marriage wasn't right. Because when yeah. I was married, I was like, can we please have an open relationship? Like, that's what right? I wanted. That's so funny. Yeah, and, and people were like, don't you think that's a sign that he's, like, if you're not... But I I was... If you're not on the same page sexually, I've tried to make relationships work where we just... And not nothing against those men, but we're just very different sexually. Right. Uh, it, like, not why? No, it's not going to work. Yeah. Eventually, you're going to snap and be I like, think I so. need more. I just, I don't, I don't mind. It's weird, but I don't mind a guy that I'm with occasionally hooking up like I could be with a guy if he's like say he's a comic I would never but say he's a comic <laughs> and he's on the road and occasionally he takes a fan back to his room and they hook up and he doesn't they don't keep in he touch he doesn't fall They're in not, love with her yeah it's a one time whatever I don't really think I care well, no me too you know what okay so that the person I had this like the fling with I talked about early, like a few minutes ago and I was like I went crazy before we had hooked up or anything uh, it's some somehow we were talking about relationships because we were friendly without any whatever yeah you know just like knew each other had mutual friends you know comedy whatever uh and he said something just in passing about like his ideal relationship being like oh that i would have like sort of like my main person and then like you know oh if i hook up with her and i think i got like starry-eyed at the idea of that because i was like yeah that's what i want <laughs> like, right? i got a little crazy and i was like me too i mean occasionally i actually think it might be good for like sometimes i look back at my marriage and i'm like I loved that guy so much. We were such good friends, and everything else was pretty much great. If we would have just... The sex was a big thing. Yeah, well, and it's like, to think that you can get... That, A, you can everything get everything... from one person. Or that you can give one person everything they need is yeah. insane. I think so, like, too. I can never be, like, I'll never be an Asian girl. Like, if that's a thing... <laughs> You what want, or like i don't understand like i don't know if there's things that like i'm not into but a guy might be into and I, it's like oh i don't need to throw away the whole relationship just because i don't want to spank you or whatever you know? like, yeah exactly but I, I think it might be healthy i think it's 100 percent healthy i think monogamy long term is insane i think it's impossible uh just uh i'm getting married in two yeah. days what do you think about Good this? Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, Aaron, talk to us, though. For real, like, what do you think about this? Because you're, you're getting married, so are you guys, like, traditional? Or are you just going to be just the two of you yeah. forever? Yeah, yeah. And that's, you're cool with that? I'm totally cool with that. See, that's, like, He's I nice, love... Though. When it's also, like, I... But as <laughs> much as... not damaged. You know what? As much as... That's true, and I'm yeah, so I, damaged. I can imagine if I was a comic on the road, that would be really hard. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, I guess. Yeah. Maybe if you're in a circumstance where people are throwing themselves at you. It'd be hard. Yeah. Well, that's what... Also, especially for men, because women, we have our whole lives of having people thrown at us. We're used and you to get it. used to it. But for a man, yeah. especially when he goes from, like, kind of doing nothing to suddenly having, like, fame, then women are, like just hungry monsters like oh miss you have a show on what channel like you're right especially in la it's like, no, 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 no. isn't it so weird so, like to date someone who's like famous especially a male and think that like and be like never touch anyone else is like get over yourself lady and it's, it's like not it, gonna happen the amount of people they turn down and then one slips through the cracks that's what i always think is like when people are like yeah, well, you've had sex with a lot of guys. I'm like, well, let's focus on how many I haven't had sex with. Because that someone, number is so big. There's someone, I can't remember who it is that has a joke about that. And it's something like, if I turn down 99 out of 100 girls, I'm st it's still an A. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's still 99%. I'm still doing well. Right? Well, that's the same. Is I turned down like 99% of the men who want to fuck me. I've still probably had sex with over 100 men. I mean, it is crazy. Like, I was in Vegas not too long ago um, doing this, like, celebrity golf tournament thing. And hey. I was with... Yeah, golf. It was, it was yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dude, listen to this shit. One of the regrets of my life. If you're listening, Tyson, I was with Rampage Jackson and Tyson Beckford. <gasps> I did not hook up with either. Why? That's the regret. Oh, so God. I didn't hook up with either. But I'm out with these two guys, and Rampage is actually like a little more um, shy. I mean, he's not shy, but he's not the type to go and just like start macking on some girls. Yeah, That's yeah, not yeah. the way he's. Tyson, on the other hand, hello. This motherfucker, I mean, like, I, I've been out with, like, famous guys, but I've never been out with a guy that looks like Tyson. Yeah, of course. In Vegas. He's sitting there, and I mean, it was like... Just swimming in Women pussy. would not, <laughs> they could not control, you could see it on their face, the way they were looking at him. Every just girl just wanted to fuck the shit out of him. That's so funny. And he could have easily just probably grabbed four girls and gone back to a hotel room and I mean, I'm looking at that and I'm just thinking to myself, like, if this guy was faithful to one woman, it, he would be Jesus. Yes. It would be impossible. Well, like he'd be going crazy. Yeah. And, and also, I just, I mean, but you know what? All this being said, there is, and I don't know how much of it's like uh, this, like, wanting to find a person or it's like social conditioning. I don't know what the mix is, but there is always still a little, like, voice in the back of my head or something that's like, but like... Uh, Because the way I really am is like, I don't think marriage is a good idea. Like, it'll fall apart, whatever. But there's still a little... Don't worry, Aaron. But there's still a little (laughs) part of me that has this, like, idealized, like, but what if I found the right person? Or, like, I would still love to find someone that I'm like, you know what? I still don't know if it'll work, but fuck it. Let's try it. Like, yeah, well, I go for it. I love you enough that I'm willing to give it a shot. Yeah. Beautiful. I mean, I will say this, and Aaron, this is partly for you, but not just for you, (laughs) that I... There are a lot of things about being married that I do miss a lot. Like, it's great to have, it's great to have someone who is such a close friend that, like, just, there. you just know, like, when anything amazing happens, you automatically you have text them. When having I, someone to tell, that's what I miss about yeah. relationships, because I'll get good news now, and I'll be like, <laughs> yeah. And it's, you can tell your girlfriends and stuff. Like, yeah. I have, yeah. And then it's even, like, sometimes with that, and of course your friends are always excited for you, but, like, it all intermingles because it's like all my friends also are in the same industry. So I'm like, does it come across like I'm bragging instead of just yeah, being excited? I get that. Yeah. And it's like, this isn't even a thing they wanted, but I'm still going to feel like, right? Am I shoving it down your throat? I'm not. But yeah. Like, how are they going to It's hard to it? brag. It's hard to give good news to other friends who are doing like, what you're doing. Like, you don't want to be. I like know. If you, like, I remember 2013, I had this like, like great festival year. Yeah. Like when I first kind of like, that's when I left my full time job and like I got into so many festivals, but it was just like, hey, did, did you submit to such and such festival? And like waiting for them to be like, yeah, I haven't heard anything. And being like, okay, well. No, <laughs> I know. No, you or always like, can't. The, the guy, I was dating a guy who really wanted to get into Bridgetown. And I got into Bridgetown. And I got an email. And I was like, oh, my God, this email went to my spam. Apparently, I got into Bridgetown. And he's like, oh, maybe, oh. Uh, oh, maybe my email went to the spam. And then I was like, D- did you find anything? And he's like, no, there's nothing here. And I'm like, oh, Oh. I mean, it's like they want to try to be supportive for you, but that's like, an awkward dynamic of dating someone the, that works in this one business. One of the pros and cons. I mean, I, one I, of the cons. I won't. I can't. I don't date comics just because I just I, honestly the reason I stop. I stopped because I used to. I did you're, date some. You're com- smart and strong. I mean, I, I just I get tired of talking about it all about, all the see, time. I, I don't know if I do. And also, there were there was a while where I kept being like, no more. I'm not. I no more comedians. But it's like. I'm not going to date all you anyone meet. else. They're all you meet. Yeah. I mean, people have been on my shit lately because I'm not going to lie. Like, I've been hanging out with porn guys. Yeah. And it's like been, it kind of, for me, it used to be comedians because they were the only guys I would meet. Then I hosted the them. AVN Awards. All of a sudden, all the guys hitting on me be- turned into porn guys all of a sudden. Hey. And people are giving me shit like, Kate, don't, you can't, if you hook up with more than one porn guy, you're the chick that fucks porn stars. And I'm like, okay, but I mean. You mean I'm what every guy wishes he could be? <laughs> are you kidding me? It is funny. I had Dana Moon on, or I think it was Dana, or maybe it was Nicole Amy. I can't remember which one was like, well, you don't have to apologize. You're fucking, 
you're fucking like A-list fuckers, like they're professional fuckers, that and you're apologizing Nicole. for. I think it was. <laughs> the, I think it was like, Nicole. That, that had to be Nicole. I think it was Nicole, but I mean, it's like. It, it doesn't, the point is... Yeah, you get to fuck people who fuck for a living. That's yeah. amazing. I mean, it's not really as hard as you'd think to, to make it happen for you if you'd I like mean, to. Yeah, it's, I mean... Just go on Twitter. Get I tweeting. Mean, hey. Hey. <laughs> I see you. Um, I have a... Oh, God damn, you're such a great guest, and I hate that we only have a few more minutes, but I have a few more. I'm going to ask you a few questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, All right. right. So question number one is this. This is a great question I got from, uh, I think it was on Instagram, what do you think about a guy who has a girlfriend and he buys sex toys for that girl and then they break up and he keeps the sex toys and he cleans them off to use on you? Would you be okay with that? Uh, this God, is from a guy because he's like, they're really expensive. And I, he's like, I bought my girlfriend a box of really expensive sex toys. And when we broke up, she wanted them and I wouldn't give them to her. So I have them and I don't know if I can use them or not. I think... Mm, it's it comes off creepy to me if a guy were to be like, I already have this dildo. It's like, why? It is right. Yeah, I would be very much against no. it. No, and I'm not. I'm not anti. It's not like a. It's not a, like a weird bitter jealousy thing. It's like you use these. Oh like, no, it's germs. No, it's just it's germs. It's also just like I'm sorry, you just been hanging on to this cock <laughs> ring or whatever. Or I mean, I guess cock rings are weird. But well, some like, of those vibrators are like eighty dollars. I mean, like I know, a Hitachi, right? Well, so it's, it's kind of weird now. I'm thinking about that. Is like, is it weird if I have a vibrator and I'm letting a guy use it on me? Or whatever. Is it weird that I use the same vibrator with a different guy? I've never done that. No. Because I kill them. I don't think that's Because I use them. kill them. Like, I mean, I get those little ones, and I'm like, I don't know where to find these batteries, so I just keep getting the little ones. I, I got, wear those down. Oh, me too. I got a, I got actually, I was at a party after the AVN Awards, and oh I got God. a keychain vibrator that was fucking awesome because when I was on the road doing stand-up, sometimes I would forget to bring something and I had yeah. one on my keychain and it died and I was never more sad oh than when God. that thing died. They no. don't last long. They don't last long. <laughs> and I think, I mean, I'm like, I'm, sometimes I'm like, these are probably meant to last longer than they do with me. You I had a guy, for hours? I had to use a guy, uh, I had a guy steal one from Exotica for me. He, but there was probably a free bowl oh. of them or whatever, he didn't steal it. But like, God, within two weeks, that thing was dead. Yeah, they die quick if they're if they're battery operated. It's like little ones, but yeah. it's like that's why I like the Hitachi. Ship plugs into the wall. I mean, I need to invest in one good like this is for me. You don't toy. have one. You know what? I used to have two, and then I dated a psychopath who threw out my sex toys. No, yeah. why? He was jealous of my sex toys. Some guys are. I I was in a. I will say this: the entire relationship existed because I was in a very like low self esteem place. I hated him the whole time, and I was like, I'll date this guy. He can't hurt me because I hate him. Like, and then I just it was I just that pit still. of self loathing. And then when I got out of it, I was like, this is. I have dated several people that it didn't work out with, and some of them it's like, what a weird fit. But I regret none of it except that relationship. Like, it was so bad that I was like, I regret this. Really? Yeah, because everything else, it's like, eh, I grew from it. I learned something about myself, whatever, even if they weren't great. But, like, oh, <laughs> oh. What did he do? He just was a garbage monster. He no, I like, mean for a living. Um, was he a comedian? He was attempting to be one. Att ah. I would say it was, when we were, it was before I was could call myself officially a comedian. I was making money doing something else, and he was like, I think at some shoddy, like, probably call center phone sales job. He was... He was an awful human and just like emotionally abusive, a little physical. He didn't like, he was like a grabber, not like a, he was. Uh, Sounds like a winner. Yeah. I, we might have dated the same person, by the way. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I dated. I, I, I want to think that you're better than have dated this person. But I like. date the biggest assholes. This is, I mean, like I, I am so sexually attracted to, because here's why. Because I like guys that are like really rough in bed, like killers. Yeah. But those guys are not very often good boyfriends. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, no, some of the sweetest people I've dated have been like, oh, you're just like you are in real life in bed, and it's not. And it's like, yeah. what do I expect? But That's also, I think, I think people expect something else from me in bed. Because, like, I'm very aggressive and, like, powerful. And, like, not I don't, like, lay there like a dad. You're like a like, dom? But, like, n no. In life, I feel oh, like Oh, but you're submissive. But I'm submissive. So am I. That's because women that are super, like, I think the alpha women, we seek out very alpha guys because, because they we, make us feel feminine. In the bedroom, you want to yeah. feel feminine. But I think a lot of guys I end up sort of like almost or like getting with, I think they assume I'm going to be like dominant in bed. And then they're like. They're surprised. And they're like, oh, that's not. You're the. 
I, I'm, I don't do this either. And the, and it's just this weird like, oh, you're not like this guy's not gonna fuck me till I. That's pass the out. worst. Like, <laughs> I was hanging out with a guy actually uh, that I was like real into this guy. But I never make a first move. I just don't. I'm never the first one to kiss the guy. I'm not. It gonna... makes me, and I know it's like 2016. It makes me feel ugly or like unwanted. It, if yeah, I, have to I make just the move. I need, and maybe it's because we're comics. And maybe it's all women. I'm not sure. I need a guy to make me feel very desired. Yes, I need to I feel really so do. wanted. Otherwise, Same. it's like uh, I feel like I'm. I don't know. It feels gross. But then I'm like, do men feel the same way? And we're all just trying to force each other to take the heat. I don't think so. I think guys think they're way hotter than they are. Like 90% yes, of the time. Yeah, it's like, I mean, there are people that it's like, how dare you not be worshiping me? Which is insane for me to say. But it's like, right. do, you, do you think that there's a line of women who are going to fuck you? Like, I mean, I'm telling you, I've dated guys that like here's what's crazy you know how they say like to fake confidence like you know it's like when you first start stand-up i tell yeah. people just fake confidence on it. pretend you think your jokes are fucking hilarious yeah. even if you're not sure sell it confidence yeah. goes so far i think the same is true in dating and i think guys that like even if they don't have a lot of shit going on if they act like they do suddenly you're like "Ooh, this person oh, i maybe mean the, the people he's a been, cat. i've been in relationships with people and not until i was out of it did i go like I also have like weird daddy issues and stuff. So it's like, I think I date someone, I put them on this pedestal of like, they have all the answers and like, they're doing everything well. And then I look back and I'm like, well, that person wasn't doing any better than me. Like, yeah. Yeah. I dated a guy that I was like, he's so, he's so smart and he could teach me so much. And then I look back and I'm like, that guy was so fucking dumb. He couldn't put a sentence together and it's in like a text. The, and the questions you were asking these people and like just accepting their wisdom and you're like, <laughs> oh, I was like, you're right. I should do that. Oh, God, what is wrong with us? I <sighs> hope that there are some guys listening who are as fucked up as we. I feel like the most fucked up person to have a podcast about dating, but it's fine. It's, yeah, it's, so, it's going to be fine fails for a reason. For a reason. Uh, speaking of that, before we go, I know I texted you and I was like, I want to hear some bad date or bad sex stories. Do you have any? Oh, God. Any I mean, half of the bad sex I've had is probably on my part, but. I mean, you know, it's just that it's mostly these like, like super submissive or guys that like guys that have way too much confidence. I'll say this is that I told a guy I was dating that I really liked dirty talk. I'm like, hey, like we should, you know, try to do like more of that. Like yeah. trying to nicely be like, it. hey. And then so he's on top of me. Like we're having sex at another point after I'd said this. And he like whispers in my ear, but is just like he's not saying anything. He's just like, Oh, uh, why are you like, making so sounds? weird? Like just like tr like tr like I think trying to get at the courage and dirty talk, but it just was like whispering, which whatever. Okay, but then at the end, he commented on like, yeah. So I like brought that in. Like he was so proud of himself, and I was like, how much? Your parents hugged you too much. Do you really think that that? <laughs> You just mumbled in my ear. Like, you didn't call me a whore or like anything. Those weren't words. Yeah, I love like, that, too. I love when guys call me, like, a whore. Or well, it's it's such a weird thing to, to bring up, though, because it's like... How do you tell them? How do you tell someone? And if you tell them to do it, it kind of ruins it, too. Yeah, it's, well, that's the thing is, like, that's the blurred line between, like... And this is a weird thing to talk about is, like, consent, because it's like... I know. Of course, I, of course you should always have consent, but, like, I don't want to have to... This isn't about like the sex itself, but I don't want to have to tell you the things I like. I want it to just happen. I get but everyone's it. like, the thing to do is you got to communicate and say everything. I mean, yeah, but like that <sighs> ruins it for me. The consent line, it's so, I hate, it's an awkward thing to discuss and it is tricky because I'll, I know it's like no means no, but there have been a couple times that something has happened in bed. Like, yeah. okay, like for instance, the first time I had anal. Yeah. I didn't really want to. I kind of wanted to, but I was kind of like, like I don't know. And I was kind of like, no, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to. And he was like, you're going to love it. Just relax. We'll take it really slow. And he was kind of like starting to, and I was like, no, I don't think. And then he was like, babe, I'm already in. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, it's not bad. Okay. Okay. Like, yeah. So, I mean, I can't believe I just told that I'm blushing, but like, <laughs> but that would be an example of where like, I didn't really well, there's give... moments like that. I'm like, oh, am I like, I'm part of the problem right like same because i didn't really say yes and like no means no and i was and i didn't take a stand on kind of saying no but i i was kind of saying no but i wasn't really sure yeah so i think what we should say is if 
if you mean, if you say no, you gotta fucking mean no, and you gotta make them stop, or you gotta find another word like, well, maybe I, I don't know, I don't know. This is such a weird. It's a weird topic. Yeah, we shouldn't I, we be shouldn't on even it. Go into it. No, no means no. Let's just say that. Yes. 100%. No means no, unless you're fucking me and her. Yeah, and then it's like, <laughs> and then you gotta just read the body language, right? But only with the two of us. This is this we're going to get in trouble for this. I know. Well, in the last episode, I said that Down syndrome people can fuck as much as they want and no one calls them sluts. So I'm oh on a God. roll today. I'm really killing <laughs> it. With, uh, it's fine. Everything is fine. Everyone's like, good for you. You found someone. I know. I just, I get upset because, you know, I do like, I just did the thing in Vegas where I opened for Dom Herrera in a bikini. I did it because he asked me to. That's fun. Yeah, but people, you know, I got so many people on my Instagram being like, oh, you have to pull your tits out to be funny or like whatever. And you're you're whore. Like, no, my tits aren't funny. They just look great. I mean, I'm funny aside from that. that. My thing is, I'm like, first of all, he's my friend. He asked me to do it. Second of all, I get so pissed because I'm like, if I was doing this, like, if, if I... Fucking Bobby Lee and I pull my dick out on stage. It's funny because I'm a short, pudgy fucking guy. Well, you know, it's it's a sad truth, though. And it's like a thing that I'm like guilty of saying is that like nudity is only funny if you have an ugly body. It's true. But it's, it's true. also like there's a problem in comedy, which I mean, we don't even have time to go into this, where it's like people. It's like there's this idea that like we can't accept a woman who's also beautiful that it's like oh, that it's like oh well she's pretty so she must be using that to get ahead and it's like you I use get, whatever you, you, have. you have and the thing is is i used to be so upset about that like i used to be like yeah. oh the, these you know and it's like oh i'm just mad because i'm not that hot and so i just only have this thing you to are. use or you are but it's like but i know what you mean who cares my thing is it's like you use whatever you have it's like this it's like these are all your tools. It would be Why like, would you not use it? would be like it? Brad Williams going on stage and never Addressing. talking about being a dwarf. That of course be. he's going to do material about being a dwarf. He's a dwarf. It's if like, you, why wouldn't you use the most obvious thing? Yeah. Like and a visual. I'm not saying like that people should do stand up in bikini because I honestly, even when he asked me to do it, I was like, oh, I don't know if I should do it again. I did it once just to prove the point that it could be done. But yeah. then like, I wasn't even sure. But then part of me is like, if I'm going to be this girl that's like, own what you are and don't fucking be afraid to like embrace it, embrace your sexuality, embrace whatever. I can't then be like, but I won't. I yeah. won't do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, fuck it. Whatever. Who cares? I don't know how I got on this soapbox. <laughs> this was a weird episode, but I'm really happy with it. I, I feel we covered a lot of ground. Yeah. By the way, are you single right now? I am. You are? Yes. Okay, I guys. love people. That's what's <laughs> I love people. I don't know. I'm very single, but I'm mentally like thinking about the 800 that got away all the time. Do you what know what I trying? think we should do? That would be a really fun episode of the show. And we what? should really do it. Aaron, we should talk about this. We should get law of mics one night. <gasps> and like me, you, Dana Moon, and Nicole Amy, we should just go to a bar <gasps> and we should just hit on guys. This and then we should great. edit it together into an episode and see what happens. I would love that. Wouldn't that be fun? That'd be so We should fun. all go together. Could we? Do we have lobs at this place? Could we make that happen? We'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, well, absolutely, anyway, that is not he's like, possible. like, there's no, look at behind us. What's on, the, this is what we have here, a flat <laughs> screen with nothing on it. Uh, dude, you're amazing. Thank you so much for Thanks being for here. Having you're me. fucking rad. You guys, please follow her at JMS Comedy on everything and yes. go see her. She's going to be Saskatchewan in September, uh, Africa, South Africa yeah. in November. She's fucking everywhere. And uh, yes. I love you. <laughs> Jessica Michelle Singleton, you're awesome. I love you. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thank you guys for listening. Follow me at Kate Q Funny, and I will talk to you all soon. Bye. Dude, you're such a good guest. Oh, thank you.